Welcome to Pastor's Chat today. Well, we've been talking about the subject of prayer here in 1 John chapter 5 for the past several days, and today we want to move on to the next several verses that are going to teach us of the terrible consequences of sin, even in a believer's life. So let's read beginning in verse 16. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin, not leading to death, he shall ask and God will give him life to those who commit sins that do not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. All unrighteousness is sin, but there is a sin that does not lead to death. Then verse 18. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning, but he who was born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. No one born of God does not keep practicing habitually sinning. So we're not talking about a Christian never sinning, because John in the first chapter told us, if we say we have not sinned, we don't have the truth in us, we're a liar, and we're not practicing what God teaches us to confess our sins. No, we're not talking about never sinning or sinless perfection, as some teach that. But we believe that here he's talking a Christian cannot habitually live in sin and practice sin. Why? Because he says, we know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning. We have the nature of God within us. God lives within us. God has come to dwell in our bodies. The scripture tells us, and Paul speaks of in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So we cannot and will not continue to practice sin. Now we might sin, but we won't practice habitually sin because God deals with sin in the life of a believer as he deals, as a father deals with a son that's disobedient. Now we face three enemies as believers, followers of Jesus Christ, three enemies that all are powerful enemies and would lead us away from the Lord and cause us to sin. All unrighteousness is sin. Any wrongdoing is sin. What are those three enemies? The world, the flesh, and the devil. The devil. Now the Bible tells us in 1 John 5, 19 that the world lies in the power of the evil one. Satan, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 4, he is the God of this world. In John 14, 30, he is the prince of this world. He is the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. And he has many devices that would lead us into sin. One, he is a liar. And with his lies, he deceives us as he did with Eve, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. And when we believe his lies, we turn away from God, we disobey God and God's truth. Or Satan may inflict physical suffering upon us as he did with Job. Now, he had to get permission to do that, and we'll talk about that later. But he had to get permission to, to afflict Job with suffering. So when Job was suffering, he would deny God and his relationship with God because of the pain of his suffering. But you know, Job did not do that. And then sometimes, as in David's case, Satan uses pride. David numbered the people which caused a terrible offense before a holy God, and people died as a result of his sin of pride. So Satan is like a serpent who deceives. He's like a lion who devours, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 9. He is a real enemy that we have to be aware of. And then there's not only the devil that is our enemy to lead us away from God, even as believers, there's the problem of the flesh. Yes, we have a new nature, the nature of God himself. We are partakers, Peter said, of the divine nature in 1 Peter 1. But we also still have an own nature that's still with us. Now, with this own nature, if we yield to it, we will do what is wrong. We will sin. All, un all wrongdoing is sin. So we need to be aware of these things. And of course, then there's the flesh the world and the devil. And the world itself is always trying to lure us away from God. So today, let's be aware of our enemy and let's make sure we are born of God and we will not habitually 
practice sin. God bless you, and you have a wonderful, wonderful day.